Um, I, I guess let's just talk about the goals of ESG. The, the ESG movement is designed to protect the environment. We all want that. Uh, so, social, well, is to facilitate a cleaner environment for generations to come. Social, we want every business and uh, their teams to facilitate a working environment that everyone is accepted, is, is paid a, a reasonable wage, appropriate with their skill set, and um, as uh, governance, and I'm in the military and the Air Force, and we talk about this a lot, we want every decision-making room to reflect the, the people that they serve, uh, whatever those percentages are. And, and so those are the goals. And so you reference two things that I just totally disagree with have anything to do with ESG. Uh, lit litigation risk for pharma and understaffing for whatever business you're referencing. Those are not ESG. The, uh, that is a uh, legitimate thing to take into account as it relates to the profitability of a business. If they're going to get sued and lose hundreds of billions of dollars, that's going to affect their bottom line. Understaffing, it could result in a worse good or product, would, which could also subject it to uh, major challenges in their profitability. So um, and you also reference football uh, being merit-based and I would argue that professional sports might be the, the single most merit-based because they want to win, um, but almost zero uh, professional team reflects the, the, the makeup of the people that they serve, whether it's the United States, whether it's local. So, I mean, I, I don't see that as being relevant. So, you also talk about the fact that this is important, everybody wants to do this, but I'm okay with Illinois doing whatever y'all want to do, uh, but you currently have a $140 billion uh, deficit with your pension. And when you go into austerity measures, you're going to come to Congress and you're going to say, we have uh, a massive deficit, we're going to have to go into austerity measures, it's going to impact all these people, it's going to be so sad. But I would argue that the decisions you are making, uh, s specifically as it relates to enforcing your proxy voting rights to basically try to make... I mean, I guess this is the governance social component of it, but um, it, it's not merit-based. It's not, it's, not, it's not designed to, to return, um, to make a return on that investment. And so in a world where gender, where sexual orientation, where race have become fluid, I mean, th these are things that change, um, how, are you, how do you justify putting emphasis on that as it relates to your proxy voting rights um, how do you not see that that is not a merit base and that is going to result in a, in a lower return and it's going to cause more problems than you're having right now with your pension? Okay. Uh, I've explained this before and I'll explain it again because I think there's a misunderstanding of what ESG is. ESG is data. And you said all those goals that I have, those are not my goals. So my goal, my th goals are no to data, maximize there's, returns. There's for no pensions. data that shows that if you have a certain there's, number of, of men and women or uh, minorities on a board, that that board is going to reduce, pr produce better results. I would actually even argue that there is uh, recent evidence that shows the opposite. SVB and Signature Bank, uh, most of uh, their emphasis was not on the nuts and bolts of banking. It was on diversity and inclusion. It was on ESG, and they failed. And you know what? This is the problem. My constituents, the people that I represent have to pay for it because the, uh, the systemic risk measures that were taken by Treasury and by the FDIC results in higher FDIC premiums for the banks that I serve. So again, I don't care what you do in Illinois, but don't come to me when you bankrupt your pension. Don't come to Congress when you bankrupt your pension and think we're going to bail you out like we bailed out uh, SVB and Signature Bank. Well, you're not yeah. yet. You're not yet not because, not because not. you're actually violating your fiduciary obligations to, your, uh, to, to the pension by not focusing on a return on the investment. You're focusing on things like gender and race and sexual orientation, which uh, that has nothing to do with merit. Yeah. I, I believe these recordings are videotaped and you will find if you listen to my comments that those are in fact my requirement, my, my request, are returning a fiduciary duty. Signer, Silicon Valley Bank did not fail because of focus on woke. It failed because they didn't listen to their risk managers. They if didn't have risk managers. I'm sorry. They didn't they, have risk managers because they, they had three that's diversity why they failed. officers. Well, but they had three diversity officers. Do you, not, do you not see the emphasis on, on, on ESG no. on diversity you, you as being a problem to, to pursuing uh, profit, which is basically yes. what happened there, and what, it's what you're doing. Sure. You mentioned diversity on boards. There are no quotas out there, but research has shown, multiple research uh, undertaken shows that diverse boards outperform homogenous boards. We're not excluding anyone, well, in, but saying that getting more different opinions from different backgrounds on the table produce better results. In this case, having people that have experience in banking 
would result in SVB and Signature not failing. Instead, they were focused on uh, diversity inclusion, they're focused on gender, on race, and on sexual orientation okay. and pronouns. And that's why uh, we need to stop this and we need to focus on the fiduciary obligations and getting a return for your investors. Thank you. I yield they back. focused too much on one specific risky industry. They didn't have risk managers they were listening to. That was the cause. So Mr. Chairman. Device, device. Dude, just a moment. Does gentleman yield back his time? Gentleman yields back his time.